Have you ever wondered if climate change is a new phenomenon? This is a question that tends to stir the pot in this age of rising temperatures, melting ice caps, and extreme weather events. Climate change has become a controversial issue, a hot topic that has everyone talking, but let's challenge our preconceptions for a moment. Picture a world where climate change is not a recent development, but a natural process that has been in motion for millennia. What if climate change has been shaping our world for thousands of years? Travel with us on a journey through time, from the ice age to our present day. This journey reveals a tale of two intimate partners, climate change and human civilization, dancing together through the ages. Our story begins about 20,000 years ago, during the last ice age. Imagine a world encased in ice, a harsh and unforgiving environment. Yet, humans endured their survival testament to our species' resilience and adaptability. As the ice age retreated, a warmer, wetter period followed, bringing about a remarkable transformation. The Holocene epoch started around 12,000 years ago, and with it came the birth of agriculture. This period, often referred to as the Goldilocks climate, was just right for farming to flourish. It was neither too hot nor too cold, and rainfall patterns were predictable. This stability allowed our ancestors to settle down, grow crops and raise livestock, marking the dawn of civilization. However, the climate has never been a constant. Around 4,000 years ago, a sudden, prolonged drought is believed to have caused the collapse of the Old Kingdom in Egypt, a stark reminder of how vulnerable civilizations are to the whims of the weather. Fast forward to the medieval times and we encounter the medieval warm period, a time of unusually warm weather that lasted from the 10th to the 13th centuries. This was followed by the Little Ice Age, a period of cooling that occurred from the late 14th century to the mid-19th century. These climate fluctuations affected agriculture, health, economics, and even art and literature. And here we are, in the Anthropocene, the age of humans. We're experiencing a new kind of climate change, one largely driven by human activities. We're witnessing rising temperatures, melting ice caps, and extreme weather events at an unprecedented rate. Climate change has been a constant companion to humanity, influencing our ways of living and surviving. As we look to the future, it's essential to remember the lessons from our past and understand that our actions today will determine the climate of tomorrow. The Eastern Mediterranean, the cradle of some of the earliest civilizations, holds the secrets to our past. This region, often hailed as the birthplace of civilization, has been shaped by the hands of our ancestors for thousands of years. It was here, in the fertile plains and valleys, that the first seeds of agriculture were sown, forever changing the course of human history. As the first farmers, our ancestors were pioneers in a new way of life. They traded their nomadic existence for a settled one, cultivating the earth and reaping its bounty. They plowed the fields, planted seeds, and watched as their crops sprouted and grew. This was a revolutionary moment, a time when humans began to manipulate nature to meet their needs, transforming the landscape and the economy in the process. But this journey was not without its challenges. The early civilizations faced a myriad of obstacles from wars and diseases to famines. These calamities tested their resilience, forcing them to innovate and adapt. They had to learn to store food for the lean seasons, to fight off invaders, to build societies that could withstand the test of time. Their survival was a testament to their ingenuity and resourcefulness. And yet, there was one factor that remained beyond their control, the climate. The Eastern Mediterranean, like the rest of the world, was not immune to the fluctuations of the Earth's climate. The region experienced periods of warmth and cold, of wetness and dryness. These changes in climate had profound effects on the land and its inhabitants, affecting their crops, their animals, and their water resources. The question then arises, how did these early civilizations cope with these climatic variations? 
How did they adapt their farming techniques, their societies, their very way of life to the whims of the weather? How did they survive in a world where the only constant was change? But how did these civilizations cope with the variations in climate that affected their crops, animals, and water resources? These are the questions that we will explore in our next segment. This graph tells a story of climate change over the last 20,000 years. Just imagine a timeline spanning millennia capturing the pulse of our planet's climate. It's like a heartbeat monitor for Mother Earth and it's been recording every fluctuation, every ebb and flow of temperature and precipitation in the Eastern Mediterranean. This graph isn't just a set of data points, it's a narrative, a chronicle of our planet's journey through time. It's etched with the imprints of colder and warmer periods, each leaving a distinct mark on the graph like the rings of an ancient tree. Just visualize this. There were times when the earth was swaddled in a chill, the air crisp and biting, Glaciers advanced, their icy tendrils creeping across the landscape. These were the colder periods, the valleys in our graph, when the earth took a deep, cool breath. Then, as if waking from a long slumber, the earth began to warm. The glaciers receded, surrendering their icy grip on the world. Greenery bloomed, rivers flowed with renewed vigor, and life thrived. These were the warmer periods, the peaks in our graph when the earth exhaled a warm sigh of life. But the story doesn't end there. Alongside these temperature fluctuations, the graph also reveals a dance between wetter and drier periods. There were times when the skies were generous, showering the earth with nourishing rains. Rivers swelled, crops flourished, and life prospered. These were the wetter periods, the high points in our precipitation graph. Then came the drier periods, when the skies held back their bounty. Rivers shrank, the land parched and life had to adapt or perish. These were the challenging times, the low points in our precipitation graph. The dance of these elements, warmth, cold, wet, dry, has been shaping our world, our civilizations, our way of life. It's a symphony of changes, a rhythm that has been playing since time immemorial. As we can see, the climate was not stable, but fluctuated, shaping the course of human history in the process. Every rise, every dip in this graph represents a chapter in our collective story, a testament to our resilience and adaptability in the face of ever-changing climates. Climate change is not just a challenge, but an opportunity for innovation and adaptation. Throughout history, humanity has demonstrated an exceptional ability to adapt and evolve in the face of changing environments. From the invention of agriculture to the development of complex societies, we have consistently turned obstacles into opportunities. As we look to the future, let's remember our past resilience and embrace the potential for new solutions. Climate change is not just a threat, but a catalyst for change, a challenge we have faced and overcome throughout history. Have you ever wondered how climate change has influenced the course of life on Earth? To answer this, we need to travel back in time to the Cambrian period. Picture this, the world, around 540 million years ago. A planet ripe with oxygen, brewing with a newfound vitality. This is the Cambrian period, a time of monumental change and unprecedented innovation in the history of life on Earth. Now the Cambrian period is known for something rather spectacular, the Cambrian explosion. This wasn't a physical explosion, but rather an explosion of life. In an evolutionary blink, most of the major animal groups that we know today made their grand entrance into the fossil record. So what caused this sudden burst of biodiversity? Well, a combination of factors. First, there was a significant increase in oxygen levels. More oxygen meant more energy, and more energy meant more complex life forms could evolve and thrive. But oxygen alone wasn't the sole driver. The Cambrian period saw an exciting diversification of habitats. Life wasn't just confined to the oceans anymore. New environments were being explored and colonized, providing fresh opportunities for life to adapt and diversify. And diversify it did. The Cambrian explosion saw the development of new body plans and adaptations. Life was experimenting, trying out different forms and functions. Eyes, shells, legs, antennae, you name it. The Cambrian explosion was the birthplace of many of these features. 
This period was a colossal leap forward in the evolutionary game. It was a time of rapid change and adaptation. A time when life was exploding in all its glorious diversity. It was one of the greatest bursts of biodiversity in the history of life. The Cambrian explosion set the stage for a new era of life, leading us to the Ordovician period. We'll delve into that fascinating chapter of Earth's history in our next segment. Until then, keep wondering, keep exploring, and remember, our planet's past holds the keys to understanding its future. Moving forward from the Cambrian period, we enter the Ordovician period. This period, beginning around 485 million years ago, is known for the continued diversification and expansion of life forms, particularly in the marine environments. The Ordovician period was a time of remarkable biological innovation. It was during this period that the first coral reefs came into existence, creating complex underwater ecosystems that provided homes for a myriad of marine creatures. These reefs, with their diverse habitats, played a pivotal role in driving the evolution of new species. As we dive deeper into the Ordovician seas, we encounter the first fish. Although these early fish lacked jaws and teeth, they set the stage for the evolution of all future vertebrate life, including U.S. humans. On the shores of these ancient seas, a revolutionary event was taking place. The first plants were colonizing the land, forever changing the face of the earth. These early pioneers, resembling tiny mosses, were the ancestors of all land plants, from the grasses under our feet to the towering trees above our heads. Back in the oceans, marine invertebrates such as trilobites, brachiopods, and mollusks were thriving. They reached an unparalleled peak of diversity and abundance during the Ordovician period. These creatures, with their varied shapes and sizes, dominated the seafloors and the waters above. The Ordovician radiation was a time of ecological and evolutionary innovation and experimentation. Life, in all its varied forms, was flourishing in the seas and beginning to take hold on land. The earth was teeming with life, from the smallest microbe to the largest marine predator. But just as life was reaching this zenith of diversity and abundance, it was about to face a catastrophic event. A drastic change in climate was on the horizon, a change so severe that it would lead to the first mass extinction in the history of life on Earth. But that's a story for another time. But this period of flourishing life was abruptly interrupted by a drastic change in climate, leading to the first mass extinction. The ending of the Ordovician period was marked by a significant climate shift. This wasn't just a minor hiccup in Earth's timeline, but a major turning point that led to the first mass extinction in the history of life on our planet. The cause behind this monumental shift? A leading theory suggests it was due to a decrease in atmospheric carbon dioxide. Now you might be wondering, how does that even happen? Well, this period saw the growth of land plants and the burial of organic matter, both of which are natural processes that absorb carbon dioxide. As these processes increased, they gradually sucked more and more of this greenhouse gas out of the atmosphere. With less carbon dioxide to trap heat, the Earth's temperature began to drop. This caused the expansion of ice sheets over the polar regions, initiating what we now call the Ordovician glaciation. The effect was a dramatic drop in sea level, temperature and oxygen, creating conditions that were inhospitable for many species. Marine life, which had thrived and diversified during the Ordovician period, was hit hardest. Especially those species that called the shallow and warm waters their home. It's estimated that about 85% of all species went extinct during this time. This catastrophic event reshaped the biosphere, paving the way for the Silurian period. A time of recovery and diversification, the Silurian period saw life bounce back in the face of adversity, a testament to the resilience of our planet's inhabitants. After the devastation of the Ordovician extinction, life on Earth entered the Silurian period. This was a period of resilience, recovery, and remarkable diversification. Despite the massive loss of life that marked the end of the Ordovician, Earth was far from a barren wasteland. Instead, it became a hotbed of evolution, with the survivors of the extinction adapting to the new conditions and thriving in the vacant ecological niches. 
One of the most significant developments of the Silurian period was the evolution of jaws and teeth in fish. This evolutionary leap forward opened up a whole new world of dietary possibilities and survival strategies for these marine creatures, setting the stage for the eventual rise of more advanced aquatic life forms. The Silurian period also saw the colonization of land by arthropods and vascular plants, marking the beginning of life's conquest of the terrestrial realm. Imagine, for the first time, the sight of plants taking root in the soil, reaching for the sun, and arthropods scuttling amongst the undergrowth. Moreover, the Silurian period witnessed the appearance of the first terrestrial animals with lungs. This was a monumental leap in evolution, allowing these pioneering species to exploit the abundant resources available on land and paving the way for the evolution of higher forms of life, including U.S. humans. The Silurian recovery demonstrates the resilience and innovation of life in the face of climate change, a lesson that is as relevant today as it was millions of years ago. The evidence for the accumulation of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere is undeniable. This invisible yet potent cocktail, primarily composed of carbon dioxide, methane and nitrous oxide, is causing a dramatic shift in our planet's climate. One of the most glaring and concerning consequences is the rise in global temperatures. As per the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC, our world has warmed by approximately 1.1 degrees Celsius since the pre-industrial era. The future projections are even more sobering. Depending on our actions and emission scenarios, we could see a further increase of 1.5 to 4.5 degrees Celsius by the end of this century. While these figures may seem small, let's remember that even a minor shift in temperature can significantly disrupt the delicate balance of our natural ecosystems. Even a small change in temperature can have profound impacts on the natural systems that sustain life on Earth. One of the most vulnerable and diverse ecosystems on the planet is the coral reef. These underwater wonderlands are teeming with life, hosting over a quarter of all marine species. Yet their survival hangs in the balance as they are extremely sensitive to changes in temperature, acidity and light. A coral's vibrant colors are not just for show. They are the result of a beautiful symbiosis with algae that live within the coral's tissues. But when the water's temperature rises just a few degrees above normal, corals expel these algae in a stress response. This process, known as coral bleaching, leaves the corals white and weak. Without their algae partners, corals struggle to grow and reproduce, making them susceptible to disease and death. The rise in global temperatures due to the accumulation of greenhouse gases is pushing more and more reefs over their thermal threshold, leading to widespread coral bleaching events. A stark testament to this is the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. Once a riot of color and teeming with life, it has lost more than 90% of its coral cover due to repeated bleaching events. But temperature isn't the only concern. Increasing levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere are causing the oceans to become more acidic, which is harmful to corals. This ocean acidification makes it difficult for corals to build their calcium carbonate skeletons, hindering their growth and making them more vulnerable to erosion and breakage. And then there's the issue of light. Corals need light to survive, as their symbiotic algae use it to photosynthesize. But too much light, especially when combined with high temperatures, can be harmful and lead to bleaching. The plight of our coral reefs paints a grim picture. According to a recent study, more than half of the world's coral reefs have been affected by bleaching since the 1980s. Our actions over the next few decades will determine whether these remarkable ecosystems continue to thrive or become a relic of the past. Coral reefs are not only important for the marine life that depends on them, but also for the human communities that rely on them. These underwater ecosystems are veritable treasure troves, providing an array of benefits that reach far beyond their vibrant colors and unique structures. For millions of people, 
Coral reefs are a source of sustenance and livelihood. They form the backbone of local economies, particularly in coastal and island communities. It's easy to see why. Coral reefs are the supermarkets of the sea, teeming with a variety of marine life. They serve as breeding grounds and nurseries for numerous species of fish and shellfish, many of which make their way to our dining tables. In addition, coral reefs are natural tourists' magnets, drawing in millions of snorkelers, divers and marine enthusiasts each year. This influx of visitors translates to a significant boost for local economies. In fact, it's estimated that coral reefs generate billions of dollars globally each year through tourism and fisheries. Furthermore, coral reefs play a crucial role in coastal protection. Their complex structures absorb wave energy, reducing the impact of storms, hurricanes and even tsunamis. This not only protects coastal communities and their infrastructure, but also prevents beach erosion, preserving these beautiful landscapes for future generations to enjoy. Coral reefs are also deeply woven into the cultural and social fabric of many societies. They hold significant spiritual and ancestral value for indigenous and coastal peoples and are often featured in local myths, legends and ceremonies. However, the benefits that coral reefs provide are under threat. With the ongoing climate crisis, coral reefs are disappearing at an alarming rate. And with their loss, the human communities that depend on them face an uncertain future. Imagine a world without these underwater rainforests. The loss of biodiversity would be staggering. Millions of people would lose their primary source of income and food. Coastal communities would be left vulnerable to the devastating impacts of natural disasters. And countless cultural traditions and practices would be lost forever. Losing coral reefs would mean losing a valuable source of income, food and resilience for millions of people, especially in developing countries. Fortunately, there are many people who are aware of the threats facing coral reefs and are taking action to protect and restore them. The methods employed are as diverse as the reefs themselves, each addressing unique challenges posed by a changing environment. One such method is coral gardening. Here, small fragments of corals are grown in nurseries and then transplanted onto degraded reefs. This process mimics the natural way corals reproduce and spread, but on an accelerated timeline. This technique has seen success in various parts of the world, breathing life back into areas once devoid of corals. In addition to this, the creation of artificial reefs is another promising approach. These structures, often made from materials like concrete or ceramic, provide a new home for corals to attach and grow. They also offer hard surfaces for other marine life to inhabit, fostering biodiversity and helping to rebuild the intricate web of life that makes up a healthy reef ecosystem. Monitoring coral health is also a critical part of the equation. Scientists and volunteers around the globe are keeping a close watch on reefs, tracking changes in coral health and noting signs of stress or disease. This information is vital in understanding how corals are responding to changes in their environment and can inform strategies for their protection. Reducing local stressors is another key focus. This includes efforts to reduce pollution, manage fisheries responsibly and protect coastal areas. By addressing these local pressures, we can give corals a better chance to withstand the larger, global challenges posed by climate change. And lastly, raising awareness is a powerful tool. The more people understand about the importance of coral reefs and the threats they face, the more they can contribute to their protection. This includes everything from making sustainable choices in our daily lives to advocating for policies that protect our oceans and the life they support. These efforts are crucial to ensure the survival and recovery of coral reefs in the face of climate change and to preserve their benefits for future generations.